This video is sponsored by Two Dots. Two Dots is a puzzle game that's free to download on iOS and Android. Coupled with its minimalist design and rhythmic music, it's super relaxing to play. And a little bit beautiful, if I do say so myself. The gameplay is easy to understand. All you have to do is connect the dots and meet the goals. I've been playing this lately to break up my work days and to catch my breath, and I found that it's a pretty great way to reset myself for the next task. It's engaging, it's fun, and I accidentally got an achievement by making a square around another dot. That's kind of cool. Uh, games with achievements are dangerous for me. Dangerous for people who like collecting uh, random nonsense, <laughs> like achievements. There are weekly events like the scavenger hunt, which is kind of a Where's Waldo type game, and then treasure hunts, so there's more to do than just regular levels. Right now you can even play an Easter themed treasure hunt, that's pretty cute! The art for the hunts is also super nice to scroll around and see all the details, love that. I'm having fun with it! And 115 million other global downloaders seem to be having fun with it too! Check the link in the description below or scan the QR code on the screen now so you can play Two Dots today! And now, on with the video! Howdy hey, I'm Ray. Flash dress-up games were pretty formative to me growing up. On DeviantArt's homepage, I used to see all these little Flash doll maker games made by other amateur artists like me at the time, which felt so cool to see because those were all people I saw as peers making such intricate and interactive things, things that felt so far beyond my ability. Stuff like that hugely inspired me to think of the things that I might be capable of someday. I loved playing those things. Unfortunately, I don't really have footage to show with this backstory though because the death of Flash decimated countless Flash files. Some of my own art is forever lost online now because of it. It's kind of really a huge shame. But before it went, I had this one night to myself. I went to Doll Divine, found all of the working Magical Girl games that I could, and hit the random button a bunch of times while recording my screen. And afterwards, now I had the foundation of a video for a rainy day where I could take some randomized magical girls and make some characters out of them for my story prism. Lovely viewers, today is that rainy day. I'll be taking some of these randomized designs and turning them into prism magical girls. But to start us off, I should get the three basic design rules out of the way. One, magical girls within prism can have main and accent colors. The number of colors they have directly correlates to their strength as a magical soldier. Most magical girls only have one main and one accent color. Additionally, the more frequently the accent color appears on the outfit, that is another indicator of how strong their magic is. Number two, the hair color, however, of a magical girl has little to no impact on her strength. The hair could maybe correlate to one of the main or accent colors, or it could be a completely different color. The hair's basically a freebie. And number three, each magical girl's outfit has a specific theme and her weapon has a specific theme as well. These themes can correlate, but that is optional. The theme between weapon and outfit can be completely separate. So those are the rules we're going with. Uh, and then a disclaimer that the designs I work on today aren't guaranteed to be prism canon. All of the girls at best are potential characters. This is just me doing a challenge while still being in pre-production mode with this story. Maybe some of them will end up in the actual show. Maybe parts of their ideas or designs or names will live on in a different character. Who knows? It's all a work in progress. I'm not making any firm decisions at this time. Now is the time for experimenting. So with all that in mind, let's get drawing. I started with this one by Bonnie Games, and the design I picked to draw from all the results was this one. Looking at her color scheme, it's pretty obviously red and white and blue, and it's got stars and stripes, and she sure reminds me of something, but boy, I, <laughs> I don't want to make an American flag magical girl by any stretch of the imagination. So I got some second opinions, and I landed on the idea of giving her a priestess theme with a nice, big, full skirt. Because of the way that colors work in Prism, I immediately decided that I was going to be tossing out the red and keeping the blue as her main color and the yellow as her accent to keep her power level in check. Cause like I mentioned, it's pretty rare for any magical girl to have more than one main and slash or accent color. You can see me using a couple different shades of blue here though. And that's because the rule at this point in time a uh, subject to change, but right now the rule is that if I take a different shade or a slightly different hue of a given color for a design, I'll still have it count 
as the main color. So like there's a little room for variety, but we wanna try and keep them generally close to each other. This is for the sake of a design being harmonious, but not monotonous. Should that make sense, if that makes sense. Like this shade of ultramarine can have all these different values within its hue, and these are all free game. And if I wanna cheat the colors a little bit, I can like shift it slightly towards green to make, a, make it a little more vibrant, or I could shift it slightly towards purple, as long as it's still like majorly the same blue, or like not, the same, as long as it's still majorly mostly the same blue, I will count it as the same color. But if I go in and add like a bright teal, I'm gonna count that as a separate color. Uh, so we're not adding teal, we're just doing slight variations of blue. And then black and white are free colors. In prism lore, these technically count as colorless. So black and white in the hair, they're all freebies. I wanted to keep the strap sleeves that she had in this original randomizer because I thought those were unique. But in general, I think because I haven't settled on how I want to design magical girls, she's not going to end up where I want her to be. And that's okay. I just, I've got a lot of studying still to do. I've got a lot of practice still to do. I'm still trying to make up my mind as to how I want this design convention to look. But something I'm trying to keep in mind as I work on these is to make these themes look like a magical girl inspired by X instead of a fancy version of X, in this case, a priestess. So I want like a magical girl that sort of looks like a priestess and not a, a fancy priestess. A lot of my first drafts just ended up being exploration finalizing and coming up with all the extra magical girly details, like extra layers and ruffles and stuff without getting too extra. That, those were my second drafts. And I feel like those pulled me more towards, more towards that wanting to be inspired by look instead of being straight up. All in all, I think she could look more like a magical girl after I've gotten in some practice, but for now, she's good enough. Here is Peyton. Her weapon is a big wand that can cast invisible light shields. It's very straightforward. Second from Rinmaru Games. I picked this one holding the rose because the ruffles on the skirt reminded me of bushes, and that gave me an idea. I went with the Red Queen's Garden for the theme across both her outfit and her weapon. It's a little out there as far as themes go, but I'm experimenting with how specific the themes can get, and I really like this one. I'd like to do more like this. Because the, the prisms themselves, you know, the creatures, not the military, the prisms are kind of quirky, funny little guys. They're very dramatic and theatrical. They're very stubborn. Each prism has its own identity. It individually knows how it wants its host transformed outfit to look, how their weapon will work. They know what they like and fuck you if you don't like it, you just gotta deal with it. When you transform with a prism, you are basically at their mercy as to what you will look like and how you can fight. Prisms can hardly be reasoned with in this regard, and that is at least partially due to the fact that most prisms do not speak human language with any fluency. And even though a prism will have a sort of psychic link with their host while they're transformed, it's just so that they can work together. The host still has to operate inside of the prism's rules and figure out, you know, what those rules are, how much they can bend them, so on and so forth. It's a very individual process. And since each prism is different, it's hard to tell if these rules are brought on by actual physical limitations of the prisms, or if they're just like, a, like, like, like societal rules that are taken like super seriously by them. You know, like, can you physically not give me a different outfit, or is it the principle of the matter? We as humans just don't know. The first drafts for Peyton and for this girl felt very on the nose to me with their colors and design elements. Like I put literal leaves and literal flower petals on this dress for rose bushes in a queen's garden. The weapon is literally just a giant paintbrush. That's something else I wanna study. I wanna get into item design. Designing these weapons is not fun. It's mostly difficult. I need to get better at it. Weapons in Prism work a little strangely because they can look a million different ways so long as it follows a theme. But the weapons are just solid light. So even with a paintbrush for a weapon, it's not that she's magically summoning paint to use. It is solid light that looks like paint. So in her case, I think she would use uh, the paint from her brush more like a whip, like using the hanging globs to, to smack people around more than she actually like paints things. Into the final draft, I wanted to bring the green back to the right ruffles, make it more like a dress and less like a bush. And I changed up the paintbrush to be more like a pretty wrought iron fence. Here's Italy. 
She's a pretty good example of my not being sure how much an accent color will correlate to a magical girl's power level, because I think later girls I designed in this video have similar amounts of accent colors, but I gave them more power. I, I don't know. It's an exact science. I'll get it ironed out one day and then I'll redesign everyone accordingly. This third one here is The Magical Hero Creator by Miss Angus Games. I settled on this one, but honestly, I had a real hard time making out anything to do with it. But between the uh, armored legs and this sort of horned, winged staff she has, she's kind of serving beetle vibes. And there was no real prevailing color, so I had the freedom to just choose pink, which of course I would. So I took the, the pink and the, the beetle bug vibes to come to an orchid mantis idea. Except I generally try to lean away from animals and insects for themes so I don't crowd Katsumi's team theme too much. Since her team is like pack, you know, but it's made up of like strange, not necessarily pack animals. So I, I pulled back a little bit with the idea, I just went with orchid. And I figure that orchid umbrellas over orchid mantis so I could still use like inspired things from the mantis but still call the theme orchid I think it counts yes when I started I had this vision of a short form-fitting dress but giving it detail was tricky magical girls are so detailed it's really hard to find a balance between looking detailed enough to sell the magical girl vibe tm and not being super hell to animate. I kept her colors pretty simple. I, honestly, there's not a lot to say about this one because when she's finalized, it's just a prettied up version of the draft. So I'm gonna let the speed paint roll and I'm gonna talk about the prisms some more because I want to. The prisms themselves in their active forms, the ones that look kind of like animals, they all have the same body type, but they all have unique headpieces and tails and those unique features usually reflect something relevant to their theme or their dormant forms, the ones that look like just a shape. They do have little facets on their animal bodies. They've got facet on both their bodies. And while the dormant form takes the color of their main color, the animal bodies will look almost clear with their eyes glowing the same main color that they have and the dormant shape of their prism uh, sort of set inside their head. That's kind of the rules of what prisms look like. The selection process for a prism is pretty hard to define. The whole deal is that a prism will choose its host and they'll only transform with someone that they've personally picked. You can't force a prism to transform with you. But sometimes they can get really sassy about it. Some prisms will act all put upon to have to be around the person they've paired up with. Like for example, uh, Azumi's prism actively does not like her but it still chose her. So no one really knows if there's sort of like an invisible bond drawing these pairs together or if it is the prism's choice and they just choose weirdly. They're quirky and mysterious. They work in weird ways. They're supposed to feel very sort of alien to us. All prisms have their own personalities though. No two prisms are alike and every relationship between a host and their prism is unique. In fact, depending on how much the host is willing to try and quote unquote socialize their prism, they could teach them to say a few words, sort of like a bird. Otherwise, prisms make sort of like uh, gentle glass clinking together sounds when they sort of speak. Here's our final girl, Yuzumomo, and her little orchid prism. Her outfit has the flowers adjusted to be more like stylized orchids to match her prism shape. And her weapon is a sword that acts like a sword. <laughs> Our fourth one is Glitter Cure. I got super excited when I saw this design because I feel like it's the strongest of the randomized picks. It just, it screamed like a Chinese dragon to me. The vision was present. It was felt. But I was not happy with my first draft. The dress came out pretty generic. It feels too much like a Chi Pao, which is a really commodified style, and I didn't want to do that. But it was just the first draft to get ideas out. Now I can weed out the bad ideas and carve out the good ones. The dragon puppet as the weapon, I think has to be the most interesting one so far. Even though I don't like how it looks in this draft, I think conceptually it's fun. Her prism's weapon functions like a wand, but it presents as this puppet. So she can trap any singular entity into a solid light bodysuit to essentially like imprison them and turn them into a puppet. So long as her target is within her little hand dragon's direct line of sight, I believe it would work. 
I think that might be good for balancing. And I think this is another good example to sort of talk about how uh, these weapons work. You know, it, it functions like a wand. It doesn't need to look like a puppet. The puppet part is kind of arbitrary, but it is how that particular prism likes or wants to or has to present its weapon, so that's what we have to work with. Magical girls are able to still get creative with how their weapon is used though. So even though this is a puppet, she can still manipulate it in other ways as long as she has enough magic available to be able to sort of utilize it differently. For example, in close combat, she could use the puppet like a gauntlet or increase its size to deliver a much stronger blow when she brings it down on someone's head or like suddenly making it super long and extending out in front of her to knock an opponent backwards, stuff like that. Maybe the teeth could also gnaw on people if it was big enough, I don't know. But the weapons can be manipulated in ways like changing their size or like modifying parts of them. Even some magical girls, if they have enough magic, they can duplicate their weapons. Neneko, for example, her weapons are uh, bowling pins, but she can make basically as many of those as she would like to. She's got the power for it. This prism's dormant form is also a good example of a uh, how funky their shapes can get and something I kind of struggle with myself. Each dormant form of a prism is supposed to have like its own unique shape. No two prisms look the same, but it's a pretty simple shape and it's supposed to reflect something in the outfit. So I tried to make it look kind of like the festival lamp she has in her hair. But sometimes I find myself like once I have the prism design sorted out, I'll try and just put that a, a small version of a gem that looks like their dormant prism on the outfit and that's a little too close to soul gems for me. That's not what I want. I don't know why I keep doing it when I'm not thinking. I have to remind myself to stop it. Like for Kitsumi and Yu's prisms, their dormant shapes are different shapes of bows that are reflected in the shapes on their outfits, like the kind of bows that they have on their outfit or their hair, or the petals that they have over their skirts or Yu's cape even. But neither of them actually has like the literal prism anywhere on their outfit and I'm trying to keep it that way. You know, the dormant form should just reflect the outfit. It shouldn't be on the outfit. Probably, I don't know. I'm still sorting things out. Reproduction, man. Anyway, uh, the final look here. I changed up the dress to be more inspired by a Han Fu. Uh, I took some liberties with that to make it more uh, ethereal, magical girly sort of feeling. And this is our final Dai Lu. I really like her design. Uh, I don't think this is a theme I would typically go for if I was, I don't think I would be doing a theme that was based on a holiday if I didn't have this challenge, but I like how she turned out. Uh, I still don't love the puppet visually, but oh well. And the last girl for today was made with the Keepers of the Elements by Maker. I ended up going with this one and she ended up giving me more trouble than I anticipated because what made the design I started with so appealing in the first place was the color combinations. But this is way too many colors for the average Prism Magical Girl, so essentially I couldn't use the best thing about the outfit in my version of the design. Going off of the screenshot, I could have easily gone with a Valkyrie or a Phoenix theme, but I decided to try something less specific this time to play around with more abstract representation. I wanted to focus more on the outfit just looking like a magical girl. So her theme is simply fire, and a lot of it is represented in the colors. And since I set the precedent with the Orchid Mantis girl that it could encompass similar things to the base theme, I've included some vague inspiration from Phoenixes, using the shape of their wings on her headband and on the orange sort of bodice thingy she has, corset sorta. I tried to style it to hopefully look like feathery flames. I, again, wasn't happy with my first draft. The dress felt kind of aimless, and since the fire theme is so vague, I was really struggling with how to incorporate its look to be, like, natural and also good. It's, it's a weird dress. Not to mention the colors. I miss the original colors. Simplifying color palettes is hard. So finalizing her was a task. I added some more witchy magician looking elements to her to make her feel more magical and I, most importantly, changed her hair color. This is an excellent example of why I said earlier that the hair color doesn't count towards power level. Sometimes you just need a little extra pop of color and I, I need what I need. <laughs> I need a freebie somewhere. I think her hair looks really nice being this sort of dark blue. 
I kept her outfit pretty vibrant to reflect her being a strong magical girl. But another fun fact for you, since we're almost done, vibrancy does also account for strength, but more like a phone battery. See, the longer a magical girl is active and the longer she fights, her magic will drain and her outfit will show that it's draining by becoming more and more desaturated until she's totally lost all of her colors, at which point she is completely out of magic for the day. She won't be able to maintain her transformation and her prism will have to go dormant. They're not hurt or anything, they just need to recharge in the sunlight and get their magic back before they're able to transform and fight again. And now, here she is. Here's the final Hota Ruby. Her weapon is two wands that act like a reticule, so she has to overlap both of them onto a single target before she can fire her fire. Granted that fire isn't really fire, it's solid light made to look like fire. So being hit by an attack from her is more akin to having a building thrown at you than it is to the torture of searing burning flesh. And that brings me to the end of all my randomized flash game desired magical girl designs. I had fun with these. It was some good practice. Thank you so much for joining me and thank you for watching. If you're maybe interested in supporting the channel in videos like these, I've got a merch store and a public discord linked down below in the description, as well as my Patreon. $2 a month will get you access to all of my works in progress and all of my early access like sneak peeks that I post, so you can see the projects that we're working on behind the scenes until they're made into public videos. $5 a month gets you access to the two private patron-only live streams I do every month, and $10 a month gets your name in the credits of my videos just like this. Thank you so much to Raleigh Sheridan, Angel Aphrodite, Che Baby, Morgami, Leah Michelle, Dreamy Elfie, The Wonderful Astrid, O Peachy Starzo, Chaos Era, Goblin Dog Comics, Annika Kicked Me, Desk Create, Star Soul Studios, Dre P, Asakura Toru's number one fan, Summer Sky, Light of Alpha, Morgane Shadow Squatter, Snapdragon Fern, Amohamo, Turtle Sushi, Scarab, Wing Wing, Ash Falling, Mogumi, Aki, Komodori, Number One Moragladare Simp, Alpha RJ, Alpha AC Roberts, Lux Torium, Dark Heart, Blue, Jade Warlock, Beetle Sticks, Christina Respito, Pebbly T, Ursula 707, Data Fox, Jaxel Berry, Pixie Pranxious, Kaji Perine, River Pancakes, CRO3, Common Kit, previously Ash, Via V of LVB, Natalia the Reton, 73, Just a Sketchy Nerd, Ningyo, Vesalius, The Names Raymond, Aaron the Confused, me too, M. Trey, Arcade Chu, Heli Pup, Scizor Reaper, Tabby Lafayani, Sunny Side Up, Sketchy Beats, Fawn Draven, Retro Fawn, Midge Mayhem, It's a Me Mari, Honey and Hoshiko, Oculus Portfolio, Mar, please. Nibura. Sushi McNushi. Isiga Inkblood. Jesper Barrel Alabaster. Solix. Gabriel Klinner. Sailor Starbones. Arya Days. Charlie the Kitten. Ambit Bunny. Twisted Mind. River Mori. Ace. Schmo. Shrimpy Boy. Bo Cinnaboroll. Claire A.D. King Jester. Moon Pie Dumpling. Jamie Cloud. Hi, Jamie. Larice. Dahlia Dreamcraft, Sirius Star, Vesoseal, Rainey's Corner, Kyle James Taylor, Creepy LPS 44, Blazing Locus, Sparky Knight, Neil, Devin J. Allen, Dojir, Connor Robinson, Nikolai Galagaxian, Honey Beast, Bond Envy, Martin Anderson, J. Rybloom, Buttercat Row, Eddie Star, Red, Enma Baby, EC Art, Goji Dragon, Vendetta, Chao Su, Elizabeth Ishii, Popsicle Personify, Tazara, Starling Studio, Leon Dexter, Rudio, Fathoms, Your Resident Disney Princess, ETR Draws, Cool on Cool, The Crystal Paladin, Damn Creativity, SLME, Mim Silvernote, CJ Duffy, Sweetly Sinstra, Strawberry Kitty, the Sleepy Detective, Mark Delark, Bun Bun Boy, Liu Z, Exorcist Lilium, Gravity Drop, Sammy Sammer, Miss Contrary, Glasses Protag, Mist, Queen Sunoko, Night King, Sunset Lemonade, Philip the Yoke, Sunny Bear Boy, 
Melvinix, Lucas Might Be Mothman, Kimiki Miata, Red V, Nate Art, Young Nanner, Shards of Shattered Space, Gremlin, Cassie Writes, Silas Scream, It Fucking Wimby, Cloud Axolotl 07, Genuine Hero, Mario Medina, BB Doll Studios, Zephyr Zristos, Crims Koi, Giulia, Ghostly Goat, Karina Floraline, Kitty Freak, Golatis, Phantom Bagel, Zachary Borges, Jake Von True, Madison, Dragon Draws, Stephalian, Tiger, Basically BB, Monster Freak, The Legend of Alice, Danny Glitter, White Rhino 2222, Johnny Ariano, Rain Jake, Luna Lou the Mew, Boring Studios, Luna Yoku, Daphne Jolly, Nyan Pasu, A Goat, Gallivanting Galliforms, Inger Lease, Sean M, Jordan Ripley, Dusk, Bowie Knife, Thunder Evermore, Orion of the Stars, D. Henry, Mama Peaches, Michael Sasha Rose, Fire Newt 451, Madu, Berserker 102, Michael, Cat Dagger 2, Comet Tail, Dracos, Fuzzy Shadow 2468, Scully Sweet, and Rin Rin. Ah! Jacob Goodwin, DJ Cat Meow, Emla, Fields of Starlight, Project Empyrean 5, Sweet Kitsu, Scriblet, Coatl Cuddles, Wilmersdorf Art, Lauren, Shiorio, Archibald Anarchy, Dylan MX, Mallow Chew, Alien Drag Queen, Shortcake Snake, Andrea, Dojo Kid, Mew Kichigo, Nekozawa, Night Mage EXP, Zelfus, Key the Queen, 4C, Makaru, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Dust Lotus, Russell the Jimmies, Nico Darcy, Andrew Robinson, Kristaru, Kurt Coleman, Cody Richard, Hikari Yu, Johnny Stars, Kara Stark Strange, Peachy Minty, and Oswix. Thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, June will probably read them in the next one. Uh, have a great day. Bye-bye!